know, something I want to go back to a statement you made earlier that this doesn't have to be, this isn't just for people who are professional Christians. And, and I have to say, after a career of being a professional Christian, we're not even as good at it a lot of times. Um, we, we, it, well, and, it, and it's actually easy for those of us that have worked in the church or worked in ministry to, to use our busyness as an excuse not to do these things. And that's not what I'm saying. We should also be uh, loving where we live. Um, but, but those who have thought they don't have a role in this, man, th- you all are out there in a workplace, in a shopping store, in a neighborhood, in a community, at, on the soccer parents club, you know, and all those things that, that your professional pastor will never be in. So those people have no hope of being reached without you, without, without you being purposeful and loving on them. So, yeah, I write a whole chapter called The Sacred Field, and that's what that's all about, Ford. And, you know, from the way I grew up, if you weren't in church on Sunday, you know, the pastor's coming to your door this week. Um, and so living out here and us choosing to let our boys play baseball, we learned after we got the kids set up with their baseball teams that baseball happens on Sundays and baseball happens at the same time church does. Yep, sure does. And so Soccer too. I, Soccer too, exactly. So I would find myself on those baseball fields and I was mad because I felt like I should be at church and not on this baseball field. And it took a few games, sometimes a few seasons before I realized, wait, God, you're here on this soccer field. You're here on this baseball field. And I can tell you 10 years in, there are people that come to our church because we first met them on what I call the sacred field. Absolutely. And, and, you know, just like our kids seeing us do something wrong and having mm. to, to, to yeah. address it, there's something to being a, a parent on the side of the soccer field in a, in a, in a hotly contested soccer game or, and have the other parents see how we behave, uh, it, you know, for good or bad. Because frankly, yeah. oftentimes when we're able to admit a mistake, when we're able to admit our shortcomings, that's really the strength of them saying, well, that's different. You know, yeah. I've seen people blow it and I've seen people do good things, but I don't see many people apologizing and taking ownership and growing from that. So that's, good. Yeah, that's exciting. Another great place on Sunday mornings that I didn't find out about until I was no longer on a church staff. I was leading a ministry that didn't meet on Sunday mornings was Home Depot. You could have quite a parent church ministry at Home Depot on a Sunday morning. Yeah. There are a lot of people there. I thought you were going to say Costco, Gordon. Honestly, I did. No, no, no. See, Costco is our family's Sunday afternoon. Afternoon. Okay. Afternoon. Uh, After Home Depot. After Home Depot, yeah. Shauna has something with Costco. If you read her book, you'll you'll get to (laughs) pick up more on that. Something about the garden of Costco or something like that. Or the, yeah, the plentiful food that you can pick up from Costco. But so, Shauna, one section of your book towards the back uh, is a section entitled Be a Dweller of purpose. Mm. What a rich phrase. Of purpose. I'd love for you to just talk to us about that. What are some different ways that that you've connected uh, that idea of being a dweller of purpose? How do we fulfill that? You've got some some different chapters in your book on that. Yeah, to dwell, uh, there's just, you know, and more to our story, we, 10 years in San Francisco is the longest we've lived anywhere else. Mm. Um, We've done ministry in Texas and Louisiana and Alabama and Missouri. So Mm. we've moved around a lot. But to dwell, to be at a place um, fully committed, don't even put times to it, but just fully committed, realizing that there's purpose there. And a lot of times, you know, we might move to a place thinking our job brought us here, school brought us here, family brought us here. There's a lot more underneath, Mm -hmm. uh, underneath that one reason. So the idea of being a dweller of purpose is just that. And so I talk about different ways. There's everyone's uh, is a standalone chapter, but we can be um, connectors, intercessors, caretakers, storytellers, grace givers. Um, and it's just becoming more, again, this is in addition to your, your job that you do or your, your schooling that you're there for that, or the maybe elderly parent or babies that you're, you've moved to take care of. So intercessors, obviously praying, I talked about that when we, you know, prayer walks are a huge thing that we all do in our family. When we, mm-hmm. when we walk, we, we pray. That's yeah. a wonderful thing where you can multitask. Um, caretaker. I don't know how long you guys have lived um, where you live, but when you've lived there a long while and when you care for the people that you care about, there's going to be tension. 
uh, anywhere you live. And so care, caretaking is just taking care of yourself. Um, I break that down in an acronym of come to Jesus, acknowledge the tension, um, repent and recenter, and then enter back into the story. Um, I also talk about times we've had to escape the city before we explode. You know, anytime you're living sin and you're seeing the things that God wants you to see, it's heavy. It can be really heavy. It can even be heavy for the kids. And so um, we have had and do find places to escape before we explode. Um, storyteller might be one of my favorite ones. And that is um, just tell the stories of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. I think um, this might have even been missing in generations prior, where we really just didn't talk about the things that God was doing in us or God was even refining in us and telling those personal stories, but also sharing our stories with people that we're meeting. And I think it's becoming more and more a part of, mm -hmm. um, of the church these days to really talk about our stories because um, we are attracted to the personal. We're mm -hmm. attracted yes. to what God yes. has done in you and what God mm -hmm. has done in me. Yeah. And then another part of storytelling is learn the stories of your city, the history. I'm a big history buff anyway, which is odd that I live in a city in a state that's the youngest, <laughs> but uh, learn the stories of your city and then tell those stories. So that's a part of uh, storytelling. Um, and then giving grace, being a grace giver. You know what Jesus has lavished on us? We are to lavish on the people that live right ar around us. And um, yeah, it's not for us to hoard to ourselves, but to give it away. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. You know, Shauna, you've uh, you've really blessed me with that description because it reminds me of uh, the reason I am in Chicago is that I actually, I lost my wife about a year and a half ago and I'm in Chicago this week to get engaged. And um, my fiance will be moving out to Arizona where she has never been. And if you can imagine, as you've moved around, you'd, you'd understand, yes, to move from Chicago to, to Phoenix. You know, they're pretty much the same, except for everything. So, <laughs> um, but but I, I love how she keeps talking. I, I've asked her about a million times, are you sure you're okay leaving everything behind that you know? And her answer is always on this this point of, I know God has a purpose of, for putting us together now. And it's, I'm just excited to see what that will be in Phoenix. Yeah. You know, what is that, what is that going to be? You know, some of it, I think we've already, we, we both have this passion to invite our neighbors. I have the most wonderful neighbors. Um, mm. it, our, our neighborhood has changed over. Of course, I've realized that means I'm now the old timer, but we have a lot of young, young adults in the neighborhood that are just so delightful to me. And in, in my widower year, year and a half here, and um, to think about inviting them over and um, yeah. just spending time. They all have young kids and we have a pool, you know, and, and uh, in Phoenix, that's about, that's pretty high currency if you have cold water that, <laughs> that you can share, you know? So, so that's just exciting to me to, to hear yes. you describe that. Yes. And I just think about those families that are looking for someone in your season of life. They, yeah. need, they need you. They yeah, really need you. you.